Good evening, I'm David Kramer with Alaska Weather. As always, please visit our website, weather.gov slash Alaska, get any updates to the forecast, who that means, or you can check out any watches, warnings, advisories that we might have out for your area. You can also call our weather info line, 1-800-472-0391, get any updates to the forecast, who that means as well. And you can email me at the address at the bottom of the screen, david.kramer at noaa.gov. Starting off, I want to do a quick reminder for the radar outage up in the greater Fairbanks area. That's the Pedro Dome radar. Now, I know that started yesterday. Many people have already probably noticed that we're not receiving that radar data, and that maintenance did get extended until October 2nd. Again, this is for a pedestal replacement to get it uh, upgraded to last, hopefully, the next 25 years, and this outage will last until October 2nd. Also up in the uh, northern portions of the state around the Norton Sound area, we had quite a bit of rainfall out the, over the Nome area for the last 36 hours. This is a record of rainfall for September 14th with 1.27 and that 36 hour total was 1.58 inches. This breaks the old record of 0 0.87 inches set in 1985. And we will see additional rainfall on tap for the area for the remainder of today with up to an inch for today total possible. Also, I want to make note in this area that we are going to see some elevated surf of one to two feet above the normal mounts. And that's going to last until, or this evening through Wednesday. And this is for all of the Norton Sound area. Some of the flow that we have coming up that we'll talk about a little bit later. Again, that's uh, elevated surf around the Norton Sound area of one to two feet above normal from this evening through Wednesday. Taking a look down in the southeast, we have had several frost advisories out, especially for northern locations, Huna and up by the Haynes Highway. Uh, and where we still will have some areas reaching the freezing level, we will no longer be issuing the frost advisories as we have reached September 15th, which is the end of our growing season for southeast Alaska. And then until May 1st, when the growing season begins again, we'll start reissuing those advisories at that point if they are necessary. But for now, even though we will see some temperatures reaching down to the freezing level, we will not have those frost advisories out. Taking a look now at our satellite imagery, we have a low pressure system out by the western Aleutian Islands, bringing some cloud cover and rain throughout the central and western Aleutian Islands. We have another low that's moving towards the St. Lawrence Island area. This is the one that's helping with a lot of that flow to bring in some of the higher surf to areas around the Norton Sound area, and also extending an old frontal boundary out over mainland Alaska, bringing some rain to the area. And you can see the old boundary extending down through the Gulf of Alaska. And as we watch this loop one more time, you can see another low approaching from the south, south of Kodiak Island, uh, headed up towards the northern Gulf as well. So as we look at our weather for the remainder of the day, we have high pressure out over the central and eastern portions of the Gulf of Alaska, extending out over the Panhandle, allowing for fair conditions over the Panhandle. This is holding up the moisture from heading further to the east. That's coming up from the North Pacific, but still bringing it into the Kenai Peninsula area, the western half of South Central to the Kodiak Island area, as well as many places up the central and western portions of the mainland. This is being also reinforced by the low out by St. Lawrence Island, bringing some of that southwesterly flow off of the Bering Sea, adding to more of the rain through these locations, extending up into the Brooks Range as well, where we'll see some areas of snow at the higher elevations. And then along the Arctic coastline, we'll see areas of fog and a mixture of rain and fog from Ukiag down the west coast into the Norton Sound area. Out over the Gulf of, or the Bering Sea, we have the low pressure system near the western Aleutians, continue to bring showers out through much of the central and western portion of the Bering and Aleutian Islands. As we move into tonight, that low is going to push off further to the east, continuing to bring rain to the central and eastern Aleutians as well as near the Pribilof Islands, and helping to bring more of that southerly flow up through the Alaska Peninsula and up into southwest Alaska, where it'll be reinforced by that low near St. Lawrence Island, bringing in that those southerly winds up the west coast, continuing to bring rain and fog by the Kotzebue Sound area and up along the Arctic coastline. 
as our high pressure that's out over the Gulf continues to weaken and push off a little bit further to the east. This is allowing rain to progress further inland into eastern portions of the interior, eastern portions of the Brooks Range and Arctic coastline. Our low that was south of Kodiak Island will now have pushed into the northern part of the Gulf of Alaska, bringing more rain to south central area around Prince William Sound through much of the western locations from Talkeetna areas further to the west. However, our high pressure out over the eastern portion of the Gulf will keep fair weather for tonight for the Panhandle area. As we move into Wednesday, that high is continuing to weaken but sit over near the Panhandle area allowing for more fair weather for the Panhandle. However, we are still seeing that southerly push of moisture up into the northern portions of the Gulf, bringing rain to the North Gulf coastline and throughout western locations of South Central, especially at areas of higher elevation. As we look a little bit south of the Alaska Peninsula, a new system is coming in, bringing rain to the Alaska Peninsula and helping to bring more of those southerly push up the west coast of the state where we'll see continued rain from the southwestern portions of the state up the west coast, a little mixture of rain and fog by the Kotzebue Sound area, and then more rain throughout much of the interior and Arctic coastline. Out over the Bering Sea, we'll have some westerly winds, bringing some rain out over the Pribilof Islands area down to the central and eastern Aleutians as well. Finally, as we move into a Thursday, a new low is coming by the western Aleutians, reinforcing the rain out over the western and central Aleutian Islands. And then we have one of our old lows out over the Bering, or the Bristol Bay area off of an old frontal boundary where a new low is going to form in northern portions of the Gulf of Alaska, bringing heavier rainfall to areas around Kodiak Island and all throughout south central Alaska, where we'll start to see some snow in the mountains around south central Alaska. This rain will also extend further to the east through the Yakutat area and northern portions of the Panhandle as our high pressure is continuing to weaken and push off to the southeast. Out over the rest of mainland Alaska we'll see some rain out over southwestern portions of the state and then some lighter rain as we get up further north along the west coast where it starts to be joined with fog around the Seward Peninsula area and up further to the north and then another area of fog out by Kaktovik. Out over the rest of the northern part of the Bering Sea, some isolated light showers from St. Matthew Island down through the Pribilof Islands and through the eastern Aleutians. As you look at our low temperatures, staying out over the Aleutian Islands, lows dropping down into the mid-40 for the Aleutians, 46 for St. Paul, down into the lower 40s for much of the Bristol Bay area, King Salmon dropping down to 39 degrees, mid-40s for the YK Delta area, lower 40s as we go into the interior, and then out by the Seward Peninsula area, down into the mid-40s as expected. Along the Arctic coastline, most locations will be down into the mid-30s. However, locations further out to the west will be in the 40s. Down in South Central Alaska, temperatures will drop into the mid to lower 40s. And then down in the Panhandle area, northern locations dropping down into the 30s, whereas places further to the south will stay in the 40s for those lows Wednesday morning. So looking to Wednesday afternoon, temperatures in the Panhandle getting up to near 70 degrees in the south and only up around 60 degrees as we get further to the north with Yakutat only getting up to 57. Mid 50s for South Central Alaska, a little warmer in the Copper River Basin, Glen Allen getting to 60 degrees. Mid 50s for the central and eastern portions of the interior, but dropping down into the lower 50s as we get further to the west and right around 50 degrees for the Seward Peninsula area. Up along the Arctic coast, temperatures are going to get up into the mid to upper 40s and then as we drop down to southwest Alaska, lower to mid 50s are expected. Getting into the lower 50s for the Alaska Peninsula and right around 50 degrees for the Aleutian Islands and Pribilofs. For Thursday morning lows, temperatures dropping back down into the 40s for the Pribilof Islands, Aleutian Islands, and Alaska Peninsula. Lower to mid 40s for southwest Alaska as well as the Seward Peninsula. And then dropping down to near 40, in some cases into the mid 30s for central and eastern portions of the interior. Up along the Arctic coastline, temperatures are going to drop down into the 30s, but once again staying a little bit warmer for those western locations. Down in south central Alaska, temperatures are going to drop down into the mid 40s, with Kodiak City getting down to 49 degrees. And then in the Panhandle, still warmer in more southern locations, down around 50 degrees in the southern areas, and then down into the lower 40s for northern locations. Thursday afternoon highs in the Panhandle going to get up into the 50s for northern locations, in the mid 60s for areas further to the south especially since that's going to be the areas where we'll see more of the clear skies. Much of mainland Alaska is going to be in the lower to mid 50s. The exception is going to be up along the Arctic coastline where temperatures will get into the mid 40s and then down in the Alaska Peninsula, mid, lower to mid 50s are expected and near 50 degrees for the Aleutian Islands and St. Paul, St. Paul getting up to 52 degrees. 
And now, aviation weather around Alaska. For aviation, we'll start off with a look at our flying weather on Wednesday morning. Out over the Bering Sea, primarily going to see MVFR conditions. And as we move into mainland Alaska, quite a few areas with MVFR as well, especially at higher elevations as we get into a lot of the mountain ranges, with some isolated areas of IFR in those mountain ranges as well. Down in south central Alaska, going to have some MVFR conditions along the North Gulf Coast, pushing into eastern portions of Kenai Peninsula and up into other areas of South Central like the Susitna Valley. All along the west coast of the state, we are expecting MVFR conditions to persist through the morning. And then along the Arctic coastline, some areas of MVFR and IFR are expected. Down in the Panhandle area, VFR conditions should be occurring all Wednesday morning as well as Wednesday afternoon. With the exception of the very southern portions of the Panhandle, we could see some MVFR conditions. Down in South Central Alaska on Wednesday afternoon, we're going to see MVFR conditions throughout the Prince William Sound area and up through much of the um, mountain ranges, including the Dalkeetna Mountains, Alaska Range, and down in the Kenai Mountains as well. All along the west coast of the state, we're expecting to see MVFR conditions extending up into much of the interior and then through the Brooks Range as well, where we'll see some isolated areas of IFR through some of the Brooks Range. Down in the Bering Sea and Aleutian Islands, primarily MVFR conditions are expected. However, we are going to have some IFR conditions moving into the western Aleutian Islands. As you look into Thursday, those IFR conditions are going to remain over the western Aleutians, and then areas of MVFR through much of the rest of the Bering Sea and Aleutians with some isolated areas of IFR embedded. Along the west coast of the state, expecting to see primarily MVFR conditions and continuing to see a lot of the mountain ranges around south central with MVFR conditions, with some areas of IFR such as Kodiak Island and in the western portions of Prince William Sound. Up through the interior, primarily VFR conditions are expected until we get to the Brooks Range where we'll see some IFR conditions through the mountains. The north slope, however, should be VFR throughout to Thursday morning. Down in the Panhandle, continuing to see primarily VFR conditions Thursday morning. Let's so move into Thursday afternoon, continuing to see VFR conditions in the Panhandle. And we're going to see a lot of MVFR conditions for South Central Alaska, especially again at higher elevations, and with some IFR conditions for the eastern portions of the Kenai Peninsula. Up through the interior, primarily VFR conditions are expected, but as we push closer towards southwest Alaska, getting back into MVFR conditions that will occur along much of the west coast of the state, down through the Bristol Bay area, now over much of the Bering Sea and Aleutian Islands. However, we're going to continue to see lingering IFR conditions out by the western Aleutians. Up along the Arctic coastline, we are expecting VFR conditions with MVFR through much of the central and western portions of the Brooks Range. For our pass is starting up north at Anaktuvik, IFR conditions improving to MVFR conditions in the afternoon. Attigan Pass will also start IFR and then improve to marginal conditions Wednesday afternoon. Lake Clark will be IFR improving to VFR. Merrill will be IFR improving to MVFR. Rainy Pass will also start off IFR, improved to marginal conditions in the afternoon. Windy Pass going from IFR to MVFR in the afternoon on Wednesday. Isabel Pass should be MVFR throughout the day on Wednesday. Mentastic should be VFR all day. Tanita Pass should be MVFR all day. And Portage will start off IFR and then improve to marginal conditions in the afternoon. Chilkoot and White will both be VFR throughout the day on Wednesday. Taking a look at our freezing levels, we can see some of the colder air being pulled down out over the Barren Sea with 4,000 foot freezing levels reaching some of the southern and western locations of the Barren. However, we have some warmer air coming up towards the Panhandle area with freezing levels as high as 14,000 feet out over the southern portions of the Panhandle. And then our surface freezing level just to the north of the Arctic coastline over the Arctic Ocean. For icing down in the southern Barren, central and eastern Aleutian Islands, about 5,000 feet is expected. And then over the west coast, starting at the Bristol Bay area, about 5,000 feet, extending up through the Seward Peninsula area. And then as we get to the Brooks Range and Arctic coast, we do expect above 6,000 feet up there. For our jet stream, storing portion of the jet 105 knot jet of a southwesterly direction through the Alaska Peninsula and out over the southern portions of mainland Alaska. Looking down to 9,000 feet, primary flow over mainland Alaska is going to be southwesterly. There areas in the interior up to as high as 40 knots, 35 knots over the Seward Peninsula area, 35 knots down by the Alaska Peninsula, and northerly winds 40 to 45 knots for the central and western Aleutians. Down to 3,000 feet, continuing to see northerly winds for the central Aleutians around 40 knots. Flow over mainland Alaska is still going to be primarily southwesterly with the strongest winds by the Sewer Peninsula, about 45 knots there, dropping down to 25 knots over the northern interior, and also 25 knots out over the YK Delta area. 35 knots out of that southwest direction is expected along the north slope. 
As we look at our turbulence out over the Seward Peninsula and Kotzebue Sound area below 4,000 feet, extending out over St. Lawrence Island as well, and then below 3,000 feet for the central Aleutians. Hello again, I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with the National Weather Service for another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. And joining us again, talking about the augmented reality sandbox, is Eric Stevens from GINA, the Geographic Information Network of Alaska. And he's actually talking about a project from EPSCOR, which is the Experimental Program to Stimulate Competitive Research. A lot of acronyms, but some really mm -hmm. fun stuff today, right Eric? You bet. We've got a learning tool that is a tool that's fun to use, uh -huh. and it really has a, a relevance to actually daily lives of anyone who goes outside uh -huh. and sees uh, lumpy topography in Alaska. We've got yes. a lot of mountains and such. You know, when I was younger and go on your first hike in the hills, say, yeah. you're given, maybe you're in the Boy Scouts, or, or you get at the kiosk at, a, at the trailhead, a topographic map, a flat piece of paper yes. with all these lines on it, bullseyes, uh, long lines that curve back mm -hmm. on themselves, say, perhaps things that look like this. Mm -hmm. Um, a, a quadrangle or a topographic map. We've got here just to illustrate a couple of examples near Denali. Alaska okay. has so much Perfect topography, example. so many mountains. Yeah. And what are all these lines that we see? It can be mm -hmm. tough to know what this means the oh, first yeah. time you look at it. What we've got, all these lines represent lines of where the, uh, the elevation of the topography goes through a certain level above sea level, say. Mm -hmm. that This line represents where the mountains have gone from below 1,000 feet mean sea level up through a thousand feet and above. That's your thousand foot contour. And when the mountain keeps going up, mm -hmm. you're up to 1,200 feet, 1,400 feet, and so on. And that's how you get this little bullseye around, uh, around the peak of a mountain. Kind of makes layered slices, right? Kind of like layered slices. Okay. Nice way yeah. to look yeah. at that. And when you see those, the lines are closer together, you're, you're going up more steeply. Okay. If the mountain rises more slowly, it takes you longer in horizontal space to go through those different vertical increments. So that is that, really hard to visualize. Right. We're, imagine you're looking at a 2D piece of paper, two-dimensional yeah. piece of paper, but you're trying to understand what it, the three-dimensional world looks yeah. like. Yeah. Well, enter Neil, the I'll augmented help. reality I like it. sandbox. Okay. Yes, what is that? Yeah. It is right here. We have the sandbox with us today, Sandbox 2.0, portable version, Sweet. built up at University of Alaska Fairbanks. And we've got a couple of folks helping out today. Yeah, uh, let's see, Alana Velaji, and she's a uh, mechanical engineering student from the University of Alaska Fairbanks. If you want to give us a thumbs up there, Alana, thanks for helping us out today. And Courtney Brees, she's the outreach coordinator from EPSCOR, also helping us out today. Thanks, Courtney. And this tool here has a Microsoft Connect um, to sense the level of sand in this sandbox, oh, wow. and then the yeah. Connect feeds its information into a computer that then sends a signal to a projector okay. to draw the appropriate topographic lines on this topography. The fun thing about this, as we can see here, wow, that. is that the sandbox and its Connect and its projector, they all work as a team. Hmm. So here we've got a mountain in the middle of the, of the uh, sandbox. What if we uh, took down the mountain to some degree Watch as the, uh, the software responds and redraws the topography. Mm, kind of a caldera forming there. There you go, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and what's fun about the sandbox too is it knows that uh, gravity flows downhill okay. and we've got some water that's actually down in the lowest elevations. And what's happening now is we're making it rain a little bit. We'll fill up rain oh, wow. into that uh, elevated lake bed, that caldera, as you uh -huh. said. And so now water is pooled up there. And if, what if you gouged out an outlet uh -oh. channel? Glacial dam release. There you go, the water flows out. What we're seeing here is a tool mm. that allows people to touch and connect uh, Microsoft Connect, right. RRR, yeah. um, to connect two-dimensional topographic maps like what we have here, these flat things on a piece, wow. on a piece of paper, to the real three-dimensional world. I mm -hmm. think this sandbox, it's sandbox's real particular application as a learning tool to young people is what does a two-dimensional map mean when it's trying to represent the three-dimensional world? Right. This sandbox is kind of both at once. It's actually three-dimensional, uh -huh. a lumpy topography there, the sand but it's got these lines drawn on the three-dimensional sand that would be on a two-dimensional right, piece right. of paper. Wow, that, I mean, that, that is a huge leap from the learning that we experienced when we were younger to how, mm -hmm. how children and even adults are visualizing in, in these new forms of technology it allows that to kind of reshape their thinking and visualize this in a, in a very useful and 
absolutely hands-on way. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's a hands-on tool. And it's hard for me to sit here and not go play with that. <laughs> well, that's what happened. At Gina, um, up at the University of Alaska in Fairbanks, when the first model was being made, the prototype with right. plywood and such, we had professional adult <laughs> professor types had heard about this and they yeah. came by because they wanted to see how it worked. Okay. And, and everyone becomes uh, that idealistic, wonder-filled youngster. Sure. And, and you, you just can't help but play with that and to see how it reacts in time and, and um, right. it, it's a dynamic learning tool. And it Dynamic. responds. That's exactly. That's exactly mm -hmm. the word. Yeah. And you know, you wonder okay. what applicabilities beyond a teaching right. tool for Where topography it can it have? You can see how in Alaska we have inundation mapping is an okay. issue. If you had water coastal slosh, mm -hmm. slosh inland, say in a coastal flooding event right. on the western coast of Alaska or mm -hmm. the Arctic coast, you could see this. The concept is illustrated here um, as an introductory learning method. I think this is a potentially good outreach tool for all of us in Alaska. Okay, so not only just a topographical sense, a, a mapping sense, maybe something that leads into understanding of how geographic information systems work with GIS, but mm -hmm. also geology, if we wanted to get into kind of the formations and the bigger land masses and, and the representation of the 2D map. Uh, we could go into hydrology, uh, which is uh, very important in Alaska, of course. Um, and even just understanding the weather sense, mounding up a big pile of sand could be that Arctic high pressure system sitting on top of Fairbanks and the voids mm -hmm. would be low pressure systems. This can go a lot of different directions. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Wow. It's uh, not just landforms, but pressure has contours of high pressure and low pressure. And I wish I had had this kind of a learning tool no when I was taking kidding. Meteorology 101 back 25 years oh, ago. Wow. It would have been helpful, I think. Probably would have gotten a better grade. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for coming by, Eric and Alana and Courtney. Thank you so much for your help there in the sandbox. We are going to play in the sandbox a little bit more coming up tomorrow on our next edition of Alaska Weather Facts. We hope you join us for that. In the meantime, make sure you go to alaska.edu slash E-P-S-C-O-R. That's alaska.edu. EPSCOR to learn more information about what we're doing with this augmented reality sandbox around Alaska. We'll see you next time on Alaska Weather Facts. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back to the marine section of the forecast. We'll start off with a quick look at the ice edge. Not a whole lot of change, however, there has been some ice growth as far south as 74 north and but we are not seeing any of that near the navigational waters at this time and we're still expecting the minimum ice uh, concentration time to be about three weeks out down in southeast alaska on wednesday in the inside water southerly winds 10 knots are expected in southern locations it's going to be northwesterly 10 knots out over the gulf northerly winds 5 to 10 knots are expected until we get to the very northern portions of the gulf where southerly winds 10 knots are expected on Thursday, in the inside water, southerly winds 15 to 20 knots getting stronger as we get closer to Lynn Canal area, and southeasterly winds 10 knots in those southern inside waters. Out over eastern portions of the Gulf, 10 knots, and that's going to increase to 20 to 25 knots as we get into the northern portions of the Gulf, with seas as high as 11 feet in the northern locations. Wednesday for South Central Alaska, out over the Gulf waters, south to east winds 10 to 25 knots getting strongest as we get south of Seward. And then near the Barren Islands area, easterly winds 10 to 15 knots are expected. In Prince William Sound, northeasterly winds 15 knots. And in the Cook Inlet area, north to northeast winds 15 knots. As we look into Thursday, winds going to pick up quite a bit throughout the area. We're going to see winds up to 45 knots around the Barren Islands area with seas as high as 17 feet west of the Barrens. And then out over the Gulf waters, 35 to 45 knots out of an east to southeast direction, strongest as we get up near the Prince William Sound area. And then in Prince William Sound, easterly winds 30 knots are expected. In Cook Inlet, northeasterly winds 25 to 30 knots, seas as high as 12 feet in the southern Cook Inlet area. Wednesday for the Alaska Peninsula and Kodiak Island, around the island, pretty weak winds, light variable around 10 knots. Then easterly winds on the Pacific side of the peninsula, 15 to 25 knots, getting stronger as we get further to the west. And south to southeast winds on the Bering side, 15 to 20 knots. To move into Thursday, going to be stronger here as well, and you can see rotation around our low near the Kodiak Island area. South of the low, westerly winds 30 knots, and east of Kodiak Island, southerly winds 35 knots expected there with seas up to as high as 15 feet, and Chalikov Strait, easterly winds 30 knots, and then out on the Bering side, north to northwest winds 25 knots are expected. Wednesday for the Aleutian Islands and the eastern Aleutian, southerly winds 20 knots. 
becoming westerly as we move by the central Aleutian Islands, 20 to 30 knots there, and then west to northwest winds, 20 to 30 knots by the western Aleutians. For Thursday, winds going to be west to southwest for all locations, 25 to 30 knots by the western Aleutians, 15 to 25 knots for central Aleutians, and 25 knots by the eastern Aleutian Islands. Seas up to as high as 8 feet on the Pacific side. Along the west coast of the state, southerly winds are expected, 15 knots around Nunavik Island, getting up to 20 to 25 knots as we get closer towards St. Lawrence Island. St. Matthew Island, westerly winds, 15 knots, and then Saint, or around St. Paul and St. George, northerly winds, 15 knots expected. On Thursday, flow along the west coast is going to be out of a northerly direction, 10 to 15 knots north of Nunavik Island. And then south of Nunavik Island, northerly winds, 20 knots expected. For St. Matthew Island, westerly winds, 15 knots. And the Pribilof Islands, westerly winds, 15 knots. Along the Arctic coastline on Wednesday, easterly winds 25 knots are expected. Along the west coast, southerly winds 25 knots expected. And then on Thursday, along the Arctic coastline, westerly winds 5 to 10 knots. Southeasterly winds along much of the west coast, 15 to 20 knots. And then as we move through the Bering Strait area, northerly winds 15 knots. Quick recap of our tonight's weather, we're going to see rain throughout mainland Alaska with multiple low pressure systems moving through the area. We see rain on the, along the north Gulf Coast as well, and another low in the Bering Sea bringing rain to the central and eastern Aleutian Islands as well as the Pribilof Islands. High pressure out over the eastern portions of the Gulf of Alaska bringing fair weather to the Panhandle. So we move into Wednesday, high pressure continuing to bring fair weather to the Panhandle, but southerly flow throughout mainland Alaska going to bring rain throughout much of the area. Some of the eastern locations of south central are not going to see as much rain. However, as we get up into the Kotzebue Sound area, the rain is going to mix with fog. And then down in the Bering Sea, west to northwest winds are going to bring rain throughout the central and eastern locations of the Bering and Aleutian Islands. We have another low pressure system moving up from the North Pacific, bringing rain to the Alaska Peninsula and reinforcing the rain that we had for the mainland part of the state. As we move into Thursday, that system is going to move up towards the Bristol Bay area, and a new low is going to form off the old boundary in the northern part of the Gulf of Alaska, bringing heavier rainfall to the southern part of the mainland to include some snow at higher elevations in the mountains around South Central. As we move up through mainland Alaska, rain is going to taper off, especially as we get north of the Brooks Range. Down in the Panhandle area, high pressure still keeping most of the area fair, but some of the northern locations, especially as we get closer towards Yakutat, are going to see some rain. And then another low out over the Bering, rain for the Bering and Aleutians. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.